Okay, good afternoon. So as I was mentioning on, on Telegram today, we are going to um, do a couple of things. The first one is going through again the exam rules and modalities so that maybe uh, we can solve some common problem or question and then uh, have a look at the final report instruction where there are some, uh, there has been some question uh, and then if you have any question we can first of all take it in a let's say public way and then instead if you have private question that you want to share you can well we can do it one-to-one -one and who doesn't have any question instead can leave but that will be towards the end of this of this hour um, and tomorrow we will not have a class so this is actually the last lecture of this course there will be labs on wednesday so i will meet some of you on wednesday but tomorrow there will be no class and today is the last class uh, so the exam the exam is mostly related to the project development that you did during the semester and the artifacts to collect to give us for the exam are two the final report for which you have instruction and the final report should be a report so not uh, a pdf from slides but an actual report starting from a word document or google doc document or whatever word processing editor you're going to use and that will be in your group repository the one named as your group uh, and then the source of the prototype of all the prototypes uh, for the medium fidelity and the paper prototype you already have those sources in your uh, repository group repository from the assignment uh, three and four and for the code prototype you will have your source code in the repository we gave to each group um, and that is named as the application the the system the interface you are developing so each group should have access to two different repositories so if you don't have access to two different repository or you didn't notice then let us know uh, and this is up to 20 points that will be the vast majority, clearly, of the exam. Uh, I was saying these are two artifacts you deliver, and then at the exam, starting from the day of the exam, we will discuss about your project in team. Uh, another thing to deliver before the exam is, as you did already, is the heuristic evaluation that will be uh, evaluated up to six point. And this is the individual heuristic evaluation you submitted as part of uh, um, assignment three, I think. And this is at the sixth point. Uh, this is offline, right? The project development is something you did during the semester. You have to deliver this material uh, up to seven days before the, um, the the seat, the first seat, the second seat, the seat, you, you as a group decide to enroll for the first time. The risk evaluation is something you already delivered, so we just need to uh, grade it. And then at the exam, again, starting from the day of the exam, there will be a discussion on the project. Uh, and that is mandatory and should be done as a team. So all the teams should enroll to the seat, where to the exam, where you are going to present your project and everybody should be there and should be present and speaking hmm, during the presentation during the discussion and these are four points and they are all about the project um, well the project is valid until the end of the academic year so until the september session included and we can give maximum two point extra for 
any extra high quality project developed during the semester or and or shown at the exam up to a total of 32 so more than 30. Um, so these are the introduction slides so this is something not new and these are the introduction slides from september october so they are already available since a few months now and these are the assignment we already did all of this discussion <coughs> so starting from the day of the exam or at the day of the exam it depends how many groups enroll to a specific seat um, you will have one at a time one group at a time the opportunity or not the opportunity you have to present and uh, discuss your project uh, where everybody should be again present and presenting so if you are four people all the four people should be there and all the four people should enroll to the exam through the portale and all the should the four people should speak mm? so it's not it's not okay if one person speak and the other three just do the ground mm? they should be part of the discussion um, each group will present the project with these three things uh, the first one is a brief introduction of the project like one two minutes not more and possibly without slides just present the project one minute 30 seconds just give us the idea what we are going to see without slide for one simple reason that is that we already have read your report and in some cases we already have seen the evolution of the project along the semester so we have an, an idea of what's the project about so that one two minutes is just to give uh, the stage and introduce the project for that moment because if we are going to evaluate like 20 projects that could be a good idea to just give us one two minutes of oh we are groups that is doing this just to give you the context so very brief introduction one two minutes or less to the project what's the project about what was your target population what you were planning to do and then the majority of the oral discussion is about a demonstration that's being a demonstration should be a live demonstration so not slide again of the code prototype hmm? again we have read the report we have seen in the report paper prototype etc etc so we want to see there the code prototype the high fidelity prototype that is a prototype that none of us as teacher have seen up to that point hmm? so in that moment should be a demonstration of your high fidelity prototype where everybody in the groups cover the main feature and everybody in the group speak again the third thing is answering some question that we may have uh, typically what happened is that uh, the teachers of that are not in your team will ask some question hmm? so for the groups that are in my slot there will be the other two teachers asking you some question and vice versa I will ask more question to the other um, team hmm? uh, and this question will be about what you said about what you show during the demonstration and or about the report you submitted maybe there is something not clear and then we want to have a clarification of something you wrote but all of this is about the project it will be no theoretical question um, these three parts the most critical part is the second one the demonstration and it needs to be carefully prepared and not rigged up at the moment um, and again we will have already read the reports and we can have a look at the final prototype code so there is no need to cover those parts there's no need to cover the code the architecture of the system blah 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 because it's either written in the report or it's available in the repository and we have access to all of them that's why the brief introduction and then the demonstration um, <coughs> A good demonstration is something that show all the features of the prototype that you develop according to your three task 
as a story. A not so good demonstration is something that shows all the features, like this is feature number one, I'm going to show you, and this is feature number two, and I'm going to show you. Mm? And sometimes these features are, are related. Mm? So the best way for you to do a demonstration is to say, okay, our target population are, what's your target population? Students who play sport group. So, um, in this case, I am a student, then they're playing hockey. hockey. It's a very typical uh, sport here. Hockey, and I'm using the application to do whatever, and it's functionality number one. But it's still as a way in the perspective of your target user that is using the application to do some actual work to do some actual task. So this is a good way to demonstrate something. Compare this like, oh, this is the home page. And in the home page, if you click here, you will see that this happened. And if you go back and you click there, you will see that this other thing happened. So the first way is a more effective way to convey all the features in a way that you can able, you are able to show how these features are linked together and how they serve your original target population and your original idea. So this demonstration needs to be prepared hmm, because it's, it's clearly the core of your discussion. Hmm, because again, brief introduction is brief and it's an introduction. The question and answer are question. So you, if you did the project, you should be able to answer this question. So the, core, the critical core part is the demonstration. There is no assignment zero anymore. Um, okay, so this is the exam. We will start from the day of the exam included, and we will continue until we end all the groups. Um, each group typically, each discussion typically goes to uh, half an hour per group, including the question, including deciding the, the, sc the score, the grade, and we typically give score immediately. So the group present something, we ask question, we speak a little bit among us and then we give the immediately the score including the results of the heuristic evaluation, so the final score to uh, the group. In some cases when there are too many groups in an exam we wait like end of the morning to give the score to all the, the groups in the morning and in the e end of the evening, so end of half day. It depends. But these are the two cases. And in any case, we put the, the score on the Telegram group so that even if you cannot say or until the end of the morning, let's say, you can still see in a written format what's the overall score for your group. Uh, not individual, just for your group. Um, <coughs> And then we are open to a uh, question about the score, what's, what's worked or not. Um, one thing that we did notice. Questo? Niente. Um, one thing that, who knows what I was saying. <laughs> one thing that we sometimes notice, and, and I think you, I want to, to convey this to you, is that, so the, so you, as I said, there is no difference in having the exam in the first seat and second seat in July or in September. You get no penalty and the project is still the project. So you potentially, I understand that it's not desiderable, but potentially if you come in September, you will have a lot of months to complete the project. So I understand it's not optimal to, to wait until September for many, many reasons. I'm not suggesting that uh, until you want, clearly. Uh, but clearly there is no difference, you just have more time. Hmm? Uh, one thing that, that happened sometimes is that some group 
rush their project to be there for the first seat for no particular reason i mean it's not in some cases there are maybe erasmus students and need to go back and it's again reasonable they have to to take the exam in that seat otherwise they will not get the score in their own university but in other cases it's not it's not true and one thing that not happens is that some groups a few groups not a lot but a few groups rush until the first seat and then they are not satisfied with the score and then they came the second seat um, so instead of waiting the second seat because maybe they don't have enough time maybe three four more days would be enough so if you are in that case in the situation in which so the message is if you are in the situation where you are not 100% ready or you don't feel ready and you don't have any anything that is saying I have to pass this through the first seat or the second seat just wait my suggestion if you can is just wait the next exam give you more preparation and especially will avoid you to uh, do the exam the first seat and also in the second seat anyway so you are doing double time in any case so you will be there in the second seat anyway so that's one general suggestion if you are ready come whenever you want uh, when the the exam uh, session is open clearly okay i think that this is uh everything i wanted to convey about the exam any question about the modality in which the exam is going on It's getting dark, but it's not my fault. Yes. The project will uh, give us uh, at most 20 points, but uh, um, how many points, how, how many points uh, are assigned to the blank chain project, the software? The code? Um, so, if the question is, if we grade and take into consideration the quality of how the code is written, the answer is no. It's a prototype, should be working, shouldn't be embarrassing if I open the file. I mean, if I just open the file, it's not to be a mess, but if it, we are not going to to look the, the goal of this course is not to is, is not a web application course in which the goal was about developing a web application and so the code was central here the code is a way to which we realize the high fidelity prototype so the high fidelity prototype should work should work well should respect all the characteristic of a high fidelity prototype we have in assignment number the last one um, but the quality of the code will not be part of the evaluation. The high fidelity prototype will be evaluated. I don't remember the number in this moment, but it should be more or less like the first. Uh, so the paper prototype will get a certain amount of point, the medium fidelity less because it's just two pages, and then the high fidelity prototype will get more, and the uh, user evaluation will get other points. So we are giving points to the assignment, basically, more than the specific part. Well, the specific part, but then it will be uh, a score about the assignment. So the assignment of the high fidelity prototype includes the um, usability testing. So this is a, a good part of those 20 points, because clearly it's a two, two things. And then there is the um, need finding part, that's other point, and the uh, low fidelity prototype and surely a smaller amount of points for the uh, medium fidelity prototype because it's actually a, a smaller assignment than the other so less effort was just one week of assignment so and then the other more or less would be the same amount of points more or less I don't remember but I don't I don't remember ex big differences between 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 these three parts and these three other parts any other question?
So remember, at the first time you give the exam, you have to be present as a team. So the entire group should be there. And this is true only for the first time you give the exam, which implies that. So, the first time you give the exam, hopefully the first and only time you give the exam, you will be there as a team. Then, let's say that you get 25 and you didn't like it. Um, but maybe not all the groups. Maybe some, some people in the group didn't like it, that. So, you can try to fix the things you can fix and come again and present everything from scratch, deliver another version of the report, do all these final steps here, do the entire exam again, basically, but just as a subset of the group. That's a possibility, right? I ideally, you sh since it's a project, you should be able to come when you are confident that you can get the best you can and this link with the discussion the thing i said before about if you're not ready just wait one seat if you can wait but it may happen uh, it happened a few times so for for the next time if if the group is if part of the group is satisfied with the score and part is not it's possible also for the part of the group that is not satisfied to present again and do some changes clearly because presenting the same thing will give the same results except probably for the oral discussion that can change, can change, can change, is easy to change. And this applies to everything except the risk evaluation. The risk evaluation was one shot. You deliver that and that's it. There is no way to redo the risk evaluation, also because we don't have the paper prototypes anymore around, so it will be extremely difficult to, to redo that. During the demo, you should, uh, yeah, the demo will be on your devices, not on ours. And it would be good if you can, in some way, share what we see on the projector. That could be screen sharing with a laptop, that could be connecting, whatever it was. So if it's a mobile, you can decide to like uh, stream on, on, on your own laptop and connect the laptop to the, to the projector, or if you can, connect directly the smartphone to the projector, that's an option, or you can decide to use the developer tool of a browser, if it's a web application, in a mobile mode, if I, if I imagine it's yours, it's a mobile phone. Whatever option, it's up to you to demonstrate that, but if you, it's better if you use the device you, you use for the usability testing, etc., etc. Is a mobile phone yours? A tablet, so. If you find a way to, to stream, you will use the tablet to show the things, but at least we will see on the big screen what's, your, what's going on on the screen. <coughs> Any other question about the exam? And clearly we, we expect that in the prototype you show, like visual design is a criteria, we dedicated some time to that, and so colors, um, minimalistic design, all the things that are actually heuristic, you can use that for design things, and 
like if there are mandatory fields, they should be identified as mandatory, proper messaging for errors, things that we said a million times in different format during the semester that should be there clearly because it's part of good usability and good design of user interfaces. I'm trying to think about errors and things that we have seen in the past years that could be generable, generalizable enough. Any other question for me, not among you? So for the first exam, we will likely, so in the, at the moment there are 106 people enrolled at the first exam, that will be endless for us, um, especially. Um, so we will start the day of the exam, probably all day. If some of these 106 people think that it's better to move to another uh, ex seat is appreciated. Um, so the first, uh, we will surely do the, the day of the exam, all day. Um, then we have other stuff going on in the, in the coming day, other exams included. And so we will not be able to do all days the next day. So we will likely do the entire day of the exam, maybe a part of the day after, and then we will probably move the next week with the oral discussion. Uh, but we will prepare a calendar for you as group as soon as the um, the enrollment through the portale is closed. So as soon as we have the final names and final version of the groups, we will publish this calendar so that if it's needed to move some group from to another day or another time, that will be a possibility because maybe you have other exams or other things that overlaps. Okay, so this is for the first seat because too many people do. Uh, if, if they say 100 and more than 100, it will be too many people to do that all, all consequently. Um, for, for how they put the exam for in the semester, also for us, for other courses that we have. Where will be the, the exam? In the Sala Colloqui? No, the exam for, also for the day of the exam will be in the room that we have for that day, whatever it is. And for the other days, we will book a room like this because we need projectors. So we will sit the first row and then you will be here projecting. Here there is uh, HDMI and in some rooms VGA um, available. And you come here, you connect, you speak, you answer a question. Next. Yes. Sorry, say that again. If you have another exam, um, so I, I was saying we will publish a sort of calendar, sort of schedule. So if you if your group ends up in, in a slot where you have another exam or close to another exam, we will move you in, in another position. This will happen. I can tell you this will happen to move groups around. Uh, but typically what, what happens uh, is that multiple groups has problems. So it's easy to, to swap uh, one group in the position of the others and solve the problem. Most of the case is possible. So yeah, we will handle that if needed. So on the website, there should be written or will be written that if you have any of these requests, you have to tell us 
uh, up to a certain date so we first publish a schedule and then once you see the schedule you have some days to say oh i cannot be we cannot be there in that moment because we have another exam and then we will figure out how to find another place that work for your group and this this depends how many people you again are enrolled if there are 100 we will need multiple days if there are 20 we will do everything in one day so the the change is like morning to afternoon or afternoon to morning something like that okay so let's have a look at the um, Let's have a look at the final report structure. Okay. Um, just to, again, this is a document, not slides, a proper document. And you can use these as titles, subtitles. Every one, two, three, four could be a title or a subtitle of your document. And these are exactly what we ask you during the various assignment. So if you took some note, if you write down things you did, in addition to the slides, you have all the material to put here, basically, except for the last assignment, because it's clearly in progress. So it starts with the project name, value proposition, your names, and the group name. Uh, then the problem solution overview, two, four sentences, the same problem solution that we ask you at the end of the of the assignment one uh, uh, sorry assignment two and then need finding in domain of interest why you choose it interview who you interview where you interview everything you, you've done about the interview synthesis the brainstorm user need with the picture you collected each connected to each interview and answer exactly what we ask you in the assignment the solutions for the deep user need and the top solutions. Then, then I scroll too much. Then task and storyboard. So list the three tasks, simple, moderate, and complex, and why you choose them and why they are important for your target population. Again, things that they were in assignment. Uh, the storyboard strength weaknesses how well it covers the three tasks and the needs um, and then low fidelity prototype the modalities the explore the alternatives how you end up with those two version you you created and then the two paper prototypes you create with the high high level flow that you created and the heuristic evaluation you received so what we ask you after the risk evaluation, so to put together the results, the evaluations, and to comment how you're going to, to solve them, and uh, which paper prototype you selected and why. Again, all the things that were already in the assignment. Then for the medium to fidelity prototype, the two screens of the medium fidelity prototype, the tool you created for use, use that, and uh, any other violation that were missing after the creation of the medium fidelity prototype that needs to be solved in the high fidelity prototype and finally high fidelity prototype how you create that it was a react application it was a flutter application it was made on with kotlin and android what it was about and why you selected them and why it could be everybody in the team knew about it knew about this technology or it could be we wanted to explore something new and so we complicated our life um, and then add a link to the github repository of your code the one that we provided um, pick the most significant screen of the prototype and describe them and why they are significant to you in the high fidelity version and add any comments on the R coded part or the pre stored data and any limitation that the prototype still has since it's a prototype and it's not the final version of product. Again, all of this is in the assignment already. And then usability testing, preparation, what you conducted, who were the participants, the team member role, who you did the facilitator, who did the note taker, and where, how the evaluation was conducted in some room 
in a bar, at home, remotely, etc. The set of tasks you use during the evaluation and a link to the script, basically, uh, and any questionnaire and consent form you gave, like in a sort of template. And then the results, it's important, don't forget about the results. Last year we had many groups just writing preparation results and then preparation run and then no results or partial results. So results summarize the results and the findings together with any relevant pain point and successful task. So if you collect it, if you decide to have metrics, time on task, source questionnaire, uh, number of completed tasks as metric, then these are also results. So in the results, you say out of 10 tasks, they successfully completed eight. And if you have time on task, you say for each task on average, the time on task was this. And um, SUS questionnaire, then you report the SUS score for each participant and maybe an average across all participants. So all the things you collected and they should be results, they should be described as results. Um, and then discuss what you discovered after the, during or after usability testing and learn about the prototype. And again, write a non-trivial list of change of potential changes that your team would like to implement to fix the main issues emerge from the usability testing. You don't have to do that. It's not ask, we are not asking you to do the changes, but just to list the problem you find, the most significant problem you find, and how you can solve those problems. And justify its change by explaining which piece of feedback generate that. So we want, after receiving, we discovered that task number three was um, highly unsuccessful, and this was because the, the button wasn't clear, uh, and so we, we can change the text of the button. So that could be one uh, thing to, to say in that part. And then conclusion. Um, the conclusion is more philosophical uh, and not part of any assignment. So a paragraph where you say where you, where, where, what were the main learnings from this semester about the overall process following the course, your lab team, and your own project. So some consideration about the process followed during the semester, your specific topic as a lab, and your own project. One paragraph. It doesn't need to be uh, 11 pages, right? So just one, two paragraphs about that. And that's it. You create then a PDF and upload it by the deadline uh, in the your group repository. In the root folder, your group repository is fine. And <coughs> this should be done seven days before each exam date. So for the first seat, it will be seven days before whatever date. Same thing for the second, the third, and the fourth uh, exam session. It's always seven days before the actual day of the exam. Hmm? By and all the deadline as are end of the day, as we had during the course. So 11.59 p.m. Italian time. Any question about this instead? Or, yeah. If we did some changes uh, after uh, prototype review, we have to, do we have to um, implement uh, all the, the changes or the last version of the, the, the prototype? If you did some if changes, some if you did some changes about after what? The, the assignment review. The feedback. Yes, the feedback. You, well, if you get a feedback that is telling you that some things in your assignment weren't good or good enough, and you can change that clearly. Uh, you should report here the updated changed version. So the, the last version we the have. last, the most correct version you can create. We are not going to see the slides anymore. The slides were only for feedback. So here you should present the best, the best, the most correct version of your assignment after the feedback. So the feedback was useful also to write here the, the right stuff, let's say. Okay. Uh, 
you change the paper prototype after the heuristic evaluation? So since it was not asked to change the paper prototype, there is no need to report the updated paper prototype, right? So we need to see the paper prototype before the risk evaluation, because otherwise, all we are going to fix this is not visible anymore, because you already fixed that. The fixes should be only in the medium fidelity and the high fidelity. I mean, you can do whatever you want in, on your paper prototype, just was not needed, so. Any other question? No? Everything was clear? Is clear? No doubts? How many of you enrolled in the first seat? How many of you already completed your code prototype? That's interesting, um, the percentage of raise and before and after. Mm. Um, and how many of you started the usability testing? Um, on Wednesday, if you didn't do last week, my suggestion is to use the lab hours to have a look with us to the task you're going to use on disability testing, right? Because bad task will provide probably not a great result. So to be sure that tasks are, that you're going to use in disability testing are good so that you can proceed with disability testing and be sort of sure that you get a good result from the usability testing. I've seen some tasks uh, last week but there were not a lot of people during the first and second slot of the lab. So if you weren't there and you plan to came this week, then uh, dedicate a, a part of it to the tasks that will be useful because that will be the last lab. So the last chance you have the opportunity to speak with us in person before the exam, uh, normally during some fixed hour at least, and get a feedback on the task hmm, that are the core of the usability testing, okay? Any further question? Otherwise we proceed to next step. Okay, so we, we are going to do two things now. Uh, both, of that, both of those will not be recorded. Uh, the first thing is that we have Tugana here, that is a student, right, here. That is, um, I mentioned this to you last week. We were waiting for her at the end of the of last class, last Monday. Um, and then we continued to, with the class. So she is going to tell you something about a project of air quality that is within this room, this series of room, the P room, and asking you to uh, fill out a short questionnaire yes. that I'm going to send you, uh, right? Yes. Um, it's working now. Yes. yes. Um, on Telegram, on a Telegram group. I'm going to, to share with you the link of this questionnaire on the Telegram group as soon as I stop the, the registration. Uh, after that, so please stay and fill up this questionnaire and listen to her. After that, I will stay here until four, the end of the class. If you have any private question or group question, one-to-one, -one, so no, things that are not uh, recorded. Um, and so if you have any question, you can come here and we can cover those about the course, about the project, about the exam, about 
all these things. Um, so before stopping the registration, just let me, so this is again the last class of the course. Uh, I will meet some of you on Wednesday and many others probably on the exams date, um, the four exams, hopefully. Uh, I hope you have sort of enjoyed the class. Um, I hope also that you remember that you bring, that we all bring some assumption when we create system. And so in the future, clear the assumption when you are going to, to create something, in your thesis, in your work, in your life after Polytechnico, after the master degree at least in Polytechnico. And, and don't forget users. That's the other recommendation. And with that, I will stop the recording and you have to say something, right? And I will give the microphone to her.